When that alarm clock goes off. Okay, so right after this, I'm gonna start my workout, and then after my workout, breakfast, and then shower, and then head out for work. Oh, how swan! There's at least 50% of the time where you just that that soft little pillow is just caressing your head, and you want to stay there, and it takes discipline to go. Nope. I'm gonna get up out of this bed and I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do. We all average probably about five hours of sleep. Work hard, sleep less. Tomorrow morning, when that alarm goes off and you start feeling all the excuses that come in and that bed is cozy, I know what you're saying, I love my bed too. And you then go five, four, three, two, one and you get up. That discipline that you have at that moment, you win that fight. That's a big victory. And then that, that, that pattern will carry out throughout the day because once you're up, well now that I'm up, I might as well go work out because I'm already up and I, I feel good that I got up out of bed and I won that battle. Let me go win another battle. I'm gonna go get it done. And that discipline carries on throughout the day. So now you take that and you, you expand that out over a week and a month and you end up with more discipline. And it starts with that simple act of getting up and getting out of bed in the morning. I work out twice before everyone wakes up. So it started off four o'clock in the morning where I'd start and I'd start with my cardio, then I'd have breakfast, and then I would go to the gym, and then I'd go to work. And I wake up at 4.30 in the morning because no one else is awake yet. So that gives me the opportunity to do things that I need to get done kind of selfishly for myself. And the big one in that category is working out. And it doesn't feel good at 4.30 when you get up, but by the time seven o'clock rolls around and you've already worked out and you've already gotten some, some work done, and you've got some time to say goodbye to your kids before they go to school, it's infinitely better than sleeping in until 6.45 and you get out of bed and now you're, you missed your kids going to school or, or whatever. You, you, you're not prepared for the day. It's, it's awful. Wake up at the same time every day. And if you pick that time and you start waking up at the same time every day, that's very good for you. It doesn't have to be 4.30. It could be 6.30. It could be 7. I, I don't know what your personal schedule is. Find out a time, pick it, set it, stick to it, Look, everyone has a problem with time, but the day is 24 hours and we sleep six. Now, I know there's some out there that say, whoa, 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 I need eight. But I say, just sleep a little faster because the bottom line is we have six hours of sleep, 24 hours are available, so you have 18 hours now available to your work, your family, your hobbies, and also to learn something new or to do something new, which could easily be that you want to learn a new language, have to read a book every week, or, or you say, I'm gonna go and reshape my body. So you're gonna go and take this hour out of your schedule and say, I'm gonna train an hour every day. 
So this is for most people a, hu a huge challenge, but it is totally doable, I can tell them, because the kind of things that I did when I came to this country, I mean, I went to school, I was working in construction, I was working out my five hours a day. I was taking acting classes from eight o'clock at night to 12 midnight. I was doing all of those things. I wanted to make sure that out of the 24 hours of the day, that I don't waste one single hour. Those hours were too precious. And so then I just want to tell people, don't give me this thing, I have a difficult time with the time and I don't have time for this and I don't have that. You have time, you make the time. Sometimes, even if you're the most highly motivated person in the world, that grind starts to beat you down a little bit. And that's when you have to stop looking at the short-term thing, because that's not, that's not getting you to, to get it done. And you gotta look, okay, what is the long-term goal that I'm looking at? What am I really trying to get done in the long-term? And you say, oh, you know what? I'm actually waking up today early so I can be ahead of the curve, so I can sell more of these widgets or whatever, so that I can buy a house. And you know what? Today matters. Today matters. This decision that I'm making right now is that first step. It's me taking one stroke, swimming in the right direction, heading towards the shore. And if I don't take this, I'm not making any progress. I've been struggling, struggling, struggling. I'm still at all the same problems. I was still to lean on the house, still facing bankruptcy, still fighting like crazy. I was still unemployed. The next morning, the alarm goes off, and um, I pretended NASA was there. It's the stupidest story. I literally went five, four, three, two, one. I counted out loud, and then I stood up. And I, I'll never forget standing there, and for the first time in three months, I had beaten my habit of hitting the snooze button. I couldn't believe it, and I thought, wait a minute. Counting backwards? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, the next morning, I used it again, and it worked. The next morning, I used it again, and it worked. The next morning, I used it again, and it worked. And then I started to notice something really interesting. There were moments all day long, all day long, just like that five-second moment in bed, where I knew knowledge what I should do. And if I didn't move within five seconds, my brain would step in and talk me out of it. Every human being has a five second window, might even be shorter for you. You have about a five second window in which you can move from idea to action before your brain kicks into full gear and sabotages any change in behavior. Because remember, your brain is wired to stop you from doing things that are uncomfortable or uncertain or scary. It's your job to learn how to move from those ideas that could change everything into acting on them in the smallest moment. So how do you make it? How do you overcome the odds? I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes the biggest battle of our professional lives. There is no... All comes down to today. There's no plan. No plan at all. There's two We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Okay. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. Or you could be like me. Dream of pro football, get hurt, dream over. Find yourself with just seven bucks in your pocket. So how did I get here? By being the hardest worker in the room. Now it's time to see who has a heart. Now is the time to prove to yourselves and prove to everyone out there or somebody who are worthy of something. And you're able to do something special that no one else in the world can do. Are you ready to go out there and take what's yours? Yeah! What you worked hard for? Yeah! All of us in life have things we want. We don't get what we want. We get what we have to have. We all get what we tolerate in ourselves and other people. But when you're no longer willing to tolerate something, that's when your life changes. Everyone in the world 
has a list of things they think they should do. I should lose weight. I should work out. I should spend more time with my kids. I should work harder. I should make more calls. I should, I should, I should, I should. And then you know what? People don't do their shoulds and they get mad at themselves. They beat themselves up about it. What changes people is when your should becomes a must. When suddenly the thing you said should happen has to happen. That's when human beings change. It's like if you want to take the island and you're the head of the army and you want to take the island, the most powerful way to take the island is burn the boats. Because if there's no way to go back, it's amazing what happens when it's a must to do something versus a should. That's what makes human beings succeed. Ego is the success inhibitor. You have to do your best not to make decisions based off of ego for sure. Success and failure are generally 